ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧ್ಯಾಂಜನಿಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದೀ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದೀ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ದ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರಥಯಾತ್ರ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ಬಲ್ದೇವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಭದ್ರ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕಂದ ಪುರಾಣ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ನರೇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ನೇಮ್ ಇಂದ್ರ ದ್ಯುಮ್ನ ವಾಸ್ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಆಫ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಇಂದ್ರ ದ್ಯುಮ್ನ ಬಿಕೇಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಈಗರ್ ಟು ಮೀಟ್ Lord Vishnu face to face Once a Brahmana came to the palace of King Indra Dyumna and told him about an incarnation of Lord Vishnu named Neela Madhava The king then sent different Brahmanas out to search for the deity of Lord Neela Madhava they all returned unsuccessful except for one priest by name vidyapati vidyapati traveled uh, for a long time after which he came to an area inhabited by non aryans called shabaras he stayed at the house of a local chief whose name was Vishwavasu when he arrived Vishwavasu was not there but Vishwavasu's daughter Lalita was at home Vidyapati stayed there for some time and eventually married Lalita the daughter of the Shabara chief Vishwavasu Vidyapati noticed some peculiar behavior of his host Vishwavasu would go out every day around noon and would return to the house scented with fragrance of sandalwood camphor and musk Vidyapati asked his wife about this and she informed him that her father would go daily to worship neela madhava lalita had been told by her father not to tell anyone about neela madhava but she had overstepped that order by telling her husband vidyapati repeatedly requested to see neela madhava Finally, Vishwavasu, Lalita's father, bound Vidyapati's eyes and took him to see Neela Madhava. Vidyapati secretly carried some mustard seeds in his cloth and he dropped them on the path as he was walking. While he reached Neela Madhava, the blind fold was removed and vidyapati saw neela madhava vishwavasu went out to collect some forest flowers to worship neela madhava and vidyapati stayed near the deity during this time a crow fell off the branch of a tree into a nearby lake 
and drowned. It immediately took a four-armed Vaikuntha form and started back to the spiritual world. Vidyapati then climbed up onto the tree and was about to jump into the lake. A voice from the sky said, Since you have seen Nilamadhava, you should inform King Indratyumna. Vishwavasu returned and started his daily worship of Nilamadhava. Suddenly the Lord spoke to him and said, I have accepted many days the simple forest flowers and roots offered to me by you. Now I desire the royal worship offered to me in devotion by King Indradyumna. Vishwavasu felt cheated by his son-in-law. Therefore, he bound him up and kept in his house. After repeatedly being requested by his daughter, he let him go. The Brahmana Vidyapati then went to King Indradyumna and told him about his discovery. By following the mustard seeds which had grown into small plants, they were able to follow the path to Nilamadhava. When they reached the spot, they could not find him. King Indradyumna had the village besieged and arrested Vishwavasu. Suddenly, a voice from the sky told, Release the Shabara. On top of Nila Hill, you should construct a temple. There I will manifest as Daru Brahman, the absolute truth manifested in a wooden form. You will not see me as Nilamadha. The king, Indradyumna, constructed a temple. He wanted Lord Brahma to consecrate the temple. So he travelled to Brahma Loka and waited there for him. During this time, the temple became covered by sand. While Indradyumna was gone, for Sudeva, I'm sorry, while Indradyumna was gone, first Suradeva and then Galamadhava became king of the area. King Galamadhava uncovered the temple from the sand. Shortly afterwards, King Indradyumna returned from Brahma's abode. Indradyumna claimed that he had built the temple. And Gala Madhava also claimed the same thing. There was an old crow in the nearby banyan tree who was constantly singing the glories of Lord Rama. The crow had seen the construction of the temple and said that Indra Dyumna had built the temple and that Gala Madhava had just uncovered it. Because he had not told the truth, Galamadhava was ordered by Brahma to live outside the temple compound on the western side of Indradyumna Sarovara Lake. Indradyumna then asked Lord Brahma to consecrate the temple and the surrounding area, which is called Sri Kshetra, and gives the highest type of liberation. Lord Brahma told him that Sri Kshetra is manifested by the Supreme Lord's internal potency and that the Supreme Lord 
manifests himself. Therefore, he could not install the Lord here. But Lord Jagannath and his abode are eternally situated in the material world. He said he would install the flag on the temple that anyone who sees this flag and offers prostrated obeisances would easily be liberated. After a while, King Indra Dyumna became frustrated with not seeing Nila Madhava. He decided to lay on a bed of kusha grass and to fast until death. Lord Jagannath came to him in a dream and told him that I shall come floating from the sea in my wooden form as Daru Brahman. The king went to the seashore and saw a huge piece of wood which had the marks of a conch, club, disc and lotus on it. Many men and elephants tried to move Daru Brahman but they could not move him. That night, Lord Jagannath spoke to Indra Dyumna in a dream and told him to bring Vishwavasu, who used to serve Nila Madhav, and bring a golden chariot in front of Daru Brahman. The king did this and Daru Brahman easily was placed on the chariot. Lord Brahma then performed a sacrifice and established a deity of Narsimha Deva on the raised platform of the sacrificial arena. It is said that the deity of Narsimha in the present temple compound that is on the western side of the Mukti Mandapa is the original Narsimha deity. King Indra Dyumna had the best sculptors come to carve the deity of Lord Jagannath from Daru Brahman. As soon as they started their chisels broke to pieces. Vishwakarma, the architect of the demigods, assumed a form of an old Brahmana and came to Indra Dyumna. He offered to carve the deities behind closed doors for 21 days. The old sculptor then took Daru Brahman into the temple and the doors were closed. After 14 days passed, the king could not hear any sounds of the artist's tools and he became fully anxious. The king then personally opened the door of the temple by force. The king did not see the sculptor, but instead he saw the three forms of Lord Jagannath, Subhadra and Lord Balaram. Their fingers and toes were unfinished Thinking himself a great offender, the king decided to give up his life. He then laid on a bed of kusha grass and began to fast. Lord Jagannath appeared to him in a dream. Lord Jagannath told the king, I am eternally situated here in Nilachala in the form of Lord Jagannath as Daru Brahman. I have no material hands and feet, but with my transcendental senses, I accept all the items offered by my devotees. The fact that you broke your promise is a part of the pastime for me to manifest in the form of Jagannath. Those devotees whose eyes are smeared with the salve of love will always see me as Shama Sundara 
holding a flute. The king then prayed to Lord Jagannath that those in the family of the sculptor who manifested his form will continue to assist in constructing the three cards, the three rathas. He also told the king that the descendants of Vishwavasu who served him as Nila Madhava should generation after generation serve the Lord. They shall be called Daitas. The descendants of Vidyapati born from his Brahmana wife should perform the deity worship. The descendants born from a Shabara wife Lalita should cook the Lord's food. King Indra Dyumna then requested Lord Jagannath that the doors of the temple should be closed only three hours a day. The king also requested that he would not have any descendants so that no one in the future would claim the temple of Lord Jagannath as their own property. This is the story of the appearance of Lord Jagannath. Now there is also a description of uh, Jagannath being the ecstatic form of Lord Krishna himself. Once during a solar eclipse, Krishna, Balaram, Subhadra and other residents of Dwarka went to bathe in a holy pond at Kurukshetra. Knowing that Krishna would be there, Srimati Radharani, Krishna's parents, Nanda Nishoda and other residents of Vrindavan who were burning in the fire of separation from the Lord went to meet him. Inside one of the many tents the pilgrims had set up at Kurukshetra, Rohini, Lord Balaram's mother, narrated Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes to the queens of Dwaraka and other Dwaraka Nivasis. The residents of Dwaraka are said to be in the mood of opulence or Aishwarya and they worship Krishna as the Supreme Lord. But the residents of Vrindavan are in the mood of sweetness, Madhurya and they have a confidential relationship with Krishna that surpasses awe and reverence because it is based on friendship and love. Rohini's narration was thus extremely confidential. So, she posted Subhadra at the door to prevent anyone from entering. Krishna and Balaram came to the door and stood on Subhadra's left and right sides. While listening to Rohini's narration of Krishna's intimate Vrindavan pastimes, Krishna and Balaram became ecstatic and their internal feelings were exhibited externally. Their eyes became dilated. Their limbs became retracted. Seeing these transformations in Krishna and Balaram, Subhadra also became ecstatic and assumed a similar form. Thus, by hearing about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, Krishna and Balaram, with Subhadra in between, displayed their ecstatic forms of Jagannath, Baladev and Subhadra. When the sage Narada saw Krishna transformed as Jagannath, he prayed to the Lord to appear like this again. Although the Lord is not obliged to anyone, 
he reciprocates with his devotees to fulfill their desires. Thus, just as Krishna appeared as Neela Madhava to satisfy Vishwavasu, he appeared in the deity form as Jagannath and resides in Jagannath Puri to satisfy the desire of Narad Muni. This special form of Krishna is also known as Patita Pavana, the savior of the fallen. And anyone who takes his audience with proper consciousness is awarded spiritual liberation. It is said in the Narada Purana, in that great abode known as Purushottam Kshetra, which is rarely achieved among all the three worlds, the Keshava deity who was fashioned by the Supreme Lord himself is situated. If men simply see that deity, they are easily able to go to the Lord's abode. There is also a narration in the Krishna book about the origin of Jagannath Rathayatra. Once upon a time, while Lord Krishna and Balaram were living peacefully in their great city of Dwaraka, there was the rare occasion of a full solar eclipse, such as takes place at the end of every Kalpa or day of Brahma. By astronomical calculation, people were informed about this great eclipse prior to its taking place. And therefore, everyone, both men and women, decided to assemble at the holy place in Kurukshetra known as Shamanta Panchaka. After arriving in Kurukshetra, the members of the Yadu dynasty took their baths ceremoniously with self-control as enjoined in the Shastras and they observed fasting for the whole period of the eclipse in order to nullify the reactions of their sinful activities. The ceremonial functions performed by the members of the Yadu dynasty externally resemble the ritualistic ceremonies performed by the Karmis. When a karmi performs some ritualistic ceremony, his ambition is sense gratification. Good position, good wife, good house, good children or good wealth. But the ambition of the members of the Yadu dynasty was different. Their ambition was to offer Krishna perpetual devotion with faith. All the members of the Yadu dynasty were great devotees of Krishna. When Nanda Maharaj and the other residents of Vrindavan had heard that Krishna would be present in Kurukshetra because of the solar eclipse and that all the members of the Yadu dynasty would also be there, they had immediately prepared to go there. King Nanda, accompanied by his cowherd men, had loaded all their necessary paraphernalia on bullock carts and all of their Vrindavan residents had come to Kurukshetra to see their beloved sons, Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna. When the cowherd men of Vrindavan arrived in Kurukshetra, all the Yadu uh, dynasty members were most pleased. As soon as they saw the residents of Vrindavan, they stood up to welcome them and appeared to have regained their life. All the Yadus and Vrindavan residents had been very eager to meet each other. And when they actually came forward and met, they embraced one another to their heart's satisfaction and remained in embrace for a considerable time. As far as the gopis of Vrindavan were concerned, from the very beginning of their lives, they did not know anything beyond Krishna. Krishna and Balaram were their life and soul. 
the gopis were so attached to krishna that they could not even tolerate not seeing him momentarily when their eyelids blinked and impeded their vision they condemned brahma the creator of the body because he foolishly made eyelids which blinked and checked their seeing krishna because they had been separated from krishna for so many years the gopis having come along with nanda maharaj and mother yashoda felt intense ecstasy upon seeing krishna no one can imagine how eager the gopis were to see krishna again as soon as krishna became visible to them they took him inside their hearts through their eyes and embraced him to their full satisfaction even though they were embracing krishna only mentally they became so ecstatic and overwhelmed with joy that for the time being they completely forgot themselves the ecstatic trance they achieved simply by mentally embracing krishna is impossible to achieve even for great yogis constantly engaged in meditation on the supreme personality of god it krishna could understand that the gopis were wrapped in ecstasy by embracing him in their minds and therefore since he is present in everyone's heart he reciprocated the embracing from within krishna was sitting with mother yashoda and his other mothers devaki and rohini but when the mothers engaged in talking he took the opportunity and went to a secluded place to meet the gopis as soon as he approached the gopis the lord smiled and after embracing them and inquiring about their welfare he began to encourage them saying my dear friends you know that lord balaram and i left rundavan just to please our relatives and family members thus we were long engaged in fighting with our enemies and were obliged to forget you who were so much attached to me in love and affection i can understand that i have been ungrateful to you but still i know that you are faithful to me may i inquire if you have been thinking of us although we had to leave you behind my dear gopis do you not dislike remembering me considering me to have been ungrateful to you do you take my misbehavior with you very seriously fortunately you have developed loving affection for me which is the only way to achieve the transcendental position of association with me lord krishna concluded by saying unalloyed devotional service and affection for me are the cause of supreme liberation gopis responded to krishna by saying my dear krishna we therefore request that you remain with in our hearts as the rising sun that will be your greatest benediction the gopis are always liberated souls because they are always in krishna consciousness they only pretended to be entangled in the household affairs in vrindavan because of their separation from krishna he might have asked them to return with him to dwaraka but the inhabitants of vrindavan the gopis were not interested in idea of going with krishna to dwaraka they wanted to remain in vrindavan and thus feel the presence of krishna in every step of their lives 
This transcendental emotional existence of the gopis is the basic principle of Lord Chaitanya's teachings. The Ratiyatra festival observed by Lord Chaitanya is the emotional process of taking Krishna back to Vrindavan. Srimati Radharani refused to go with Krishna to Dwaraka to enjoy his company in the atmosphere of royal opulence for she wanted to enjoy his company in the original Vrindavan atmosphere. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.